Something that I see a lot of beginner producers make is that they rely on just one bass sound or one bass element for the entire low end spectrum of their track. Why not split that down into multiple layers? That's exactly what I'm going to show you in today's video using six simple steps here. Here's a quick loop that I've prepared using a kick, some top loops and a conga. Now I could go into two directions now. I could either start with some tonal elements, for example, some pad, something that would take me into more of a melodic direction, or I could choose to work on the bass first. Before we start with adding bass layers, drawing in MIDI notes, we can start with what we already have, which is the kick. So I have a kick loop here prepared using MIDI that is triggering a one shot. It sounds like this. And to give it a bit more variation, we can go inside the MIDI and start applying changes to the end of every bar. Four beats are a bar. One, two, three, four. This is a bar. So at the end of this bar, we can apply some changes to this particular kick. We can decrease the grid size. We can do that here or hit command one. And you can create like a double kick here. The second kick over here, we're going to dial down in velocity. and can do that by hitting command and dragging it down. So this is how it sounds so far. Already with that little change, it gives the groove a bit more variety and you don't want to go too overboard with this. I would suggest just adding one change at the very first bar and then one change at the very last. So for example, here again, we could maybe create a little pause. I like that little space at the end. However, I don't want it to play that frequently. Highlight this MIDI clip and hit Command E to separate it from the rest. So it's not going to be looped up until the end. And now for the first four bars, I'm actually going to keep the kick normal. And I'm going to paste this over here. So we have, let's say, these guys are the variation that contain the little spacing in the kick. And these guys are the ones that just have this as the variations. We have the kick established. Now comes step number two, which is using MIDI for toms. I'm going to create a MIDI track, therefore. And in that MIDI track, I'm going to load either a one shot or a loop. So I'm going to type in Tom at the top left corner over here, go into all, and I'm going to filter down for one shots, preferably also samples. I'm looking for something that has a bit more low end to it. Yeah, this one sounds interesting, has a bit of a longer tail to it. So what I'll do is click on the MIDI track, make sure that I'm in the device view over here and drag it right here. Let's disable the low cut that I have loaded by default for now. Create a MIDI clip that is as long as the kick here. So hit Command Shift M, open that up. And now we can start placing our tom according to where the kick plays. So you see it plays only as long as the MIDI note plays. So we're going to correct that. We're going to go back into the device view and change it to one shot. So it plays the sound to the very end. That's interesting. Maybe we can go lower. Let's see. Go with what sounds good. I actually like that. I want to keep it very simple, to be honest. So I'm going to chop it right here. Command E. And I'm going to delete the second half. Click on the first MIDI clip and make sure that this is loop enabled. And make sure that our loop length is set correctly. So we want to drag this guy out, play two bars, and then we can drag it to the very end here. Uh-huh. Already it sounds a bit interesting. Nice. So that's the first MIDI tom layer. And I mentioned before that you can use loops. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to duplicate this MIDI track. And where a one shot is loaded here, you can, of course, just take an entire loop, put it into slice mode, and then find your favorite one shots from that particular slice, right? So every MIDI note corresponds to a particular slice that you find inside here. You see? You get a ton of different sounds here. So that's something also to try out. But I'm going to delete this layer for now because I feel like I already have my result. And step number three is to use audio. So we're going to do practically the same, but with audio, because audio has a few more warping and mangling options. So what we're going to do is hit Command T. And in this audio track, we are now going to load up a loop or one shot, whatever you find from your library. OK, I kind of like this loop, so I'm going to take it. And just chuck it in the audio track, dial down the volume a bit and hit play. Yeah, I like the first two notes, but I don't like the placement. So I'm going to hit command E right here, delete the second half. And now I'm going to choose a finer grid. So command one to decrease the grid size. And I'm going to place it differently, maybe here. OK, I like the first note. So again, let's chop it right here. Maybe take this, put it here, set some fades so it doesn't sound too clicky at the beginning or end of the sound. Let's see. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. You see how much more interesting it's starting to become now? But I feel like this layer is far too loud compared to the first one. So let's dial it down so they match in volume a bit more. It's almost becoming like a melody. So cool, dude. What we can do is highlight this first bar and paste it over here. And then we can highlight these guys and paste them again. So let's listen to this entire section, see if we can add some variation to the audio layer. At the very end, I would like to create something weird. How can we do that? Well, how about we try stretching this tom over here by hitting shift and moving to the top of the clip to where you see the symbol appear. See where the arrow appears and we just drag it. So we essentially just warp and stretch the sound. Therefore, please do make sure that the sound you're working with is also warped. So if I go into this panel over here, you can see that it's warped using complex mode. You can also choose one of the other warp modes. Just try yourself out. I'm gonna stick with complex though. So let's go back into here. Maybe stretch it far more. Let's create something weird, man. Go like this maybe. That's so weird. Let's uh, maybe double click and pitch it down a bit. Yeah, that's so freaking weird. Let's go for another warp mode, maybe beats. Yeah, like gnarly little sub fill. <laughs> what up? Nice. Uh, maybe a bit too subby, but might change that later. Let's see. So after you got yourself a full phrase, what you can do is highlight it and hit Command J to consolidate it, to have it as one entire clip so your session doesn't become too messy with all those little tiny snippets. Let's duplicate this over. And already it sounds really full in terms of bass. Awesome, and it sounds very catchy, I like it. Hey everyone, just quickly pausing the video here, I've started to conceptualize and work on a new organic house course for beginners, and for the first time in a long time, I'm gonna offer some coaching in addition to the course when it launches. But the coaching is gonna be very limited to only a certain amount of people, so if you want to get on the waiting list, there's a link in the description below. It's the very first one at the very top. I'm planning on launching the course somewhere towards the beginning of next year. And the course itself will be in English, but the coaching will also be possible in both English and German as I speak German as well. So feel free to sign up and you'll be the first one to get notified as soon as anything goes live. Let's get back to the video. Now, step number four is to use tuned down percussion to add to the bass groove. And I see that my groove is already becoming quite full, but I do have a few spaces here in between. And perhaps I might fill these out with those percussion grooves. So I'll create a new audio track. You can also work with MIDI, but I'm choosing audio now. And I'm going to go for a perk. So I'll type in perk and look for a percussion groove, maybe loop. That has some low end quality to it. Oh, these are all very top end heavy. Okay, this one sounds good. You see, there's no actual bass line in here, but there's percussion that has some weight to it. And especially for these organic and tribal genres, you can still extract some value from these loops for your low end. I just dragged in the entire loop and I see that I have a space right here. See, no other bass groove is playing, so I might as well just chop it out and just get this section, Command E, and I'll delete the other parts here. So we just have this part in the middle. And if we play this, let's see how it sounds. It's probably gonna sound really weird. But there's some stuff in there. Yeah, I'm gonna add a high cut and just dial down on just the low end until 100 hertz approximately. Let's see how it sounds. You see? It adds to the groove. And if you wanna experiment a bit more, you double click it and you pitch it down. You see if it's too much or too, too little. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I just love these gnarly and you know, all these subby bass elements. They're so much fun. And sometimes I want to go overboard and I can create something weird like this. See if it fits. This would be like more of like the tribal stuff, but I want to keep it simple and organic. So I'm going to create just this phrase over here. Just leave it at that as a little filler, you know? Then I'm going to highlight this entire phrase here and I'm going to hit Command J to consolidate it again for the sake of having even clip lengths and not too many tiny clips. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. Or instead of duplicating it, you know, we can just delete these and hit loop here and just drag it also works. So this is how it sounds so far. So 
cool, dude. So step number five is to gather material. And the best way to do that is with a MIDI track using sequencers because sequencers combined with samplers in Ableton Live can give you some very weird results. And Ableton Live 12 has introduced some new sequencers, but my favorite one that I've been using since the beginning of time is Razer Advanced Step Sequencer version two. And I load it into that MIDI track. After that MIDI track, I load again, some kind of a sample. So we type in Tom, go into Lotus Tunes, perhaps loop, and we look for some kind of a Tom groove. You don't necessarily have to look for a Tom. Maybe you can go for a bass groove. So something more bass liney. Maybe something like this. So we go into slice mode. So it slices by every transient that you can see here. And now we hit randomize all. So it'll randomize the gate, the pitch, the octave, velocity. So we create a sequence that sounds somewhat like this. This has a lot more tonal material compared to the toms that we used previously. The toms are rather percussive, short, very non-tonal elements. This bass line has a tone to it. So we have to see if it's really matching our vibe. Yeah, I don't really like it. Let's see if we got some more here. Maybe this. This already is a bit more interesting. We're gonna create a new audio track, open it up. And in the input section here, you wanna change it to track number five because that's where the sequencer is. We go into record arm. Here's where it gets really fun. You just hit record. See now it records whatever's coming from here into here. It's resampling the material. And you can randomize along the way. Change your parameters along the way. Go into controls, maybe. crazy here who knows what you get man just tweak and have some fun different sample maybe yeah i think that's enough for now i'm just going to stop the recording and once that's finished you can delete the sequence layer and work with the audio that you've gathered and you want to pay attention to phrases or parts that just sound interesting to you that contribute to the rest of the groove and mostly it's the phrases that have kind of like a call and response to them. Let's go into finer grid. Maybe select a part from here that sounds interesting. Chop it out using command E and maybe select a part from here that sounds interesting. Chop it out using command E. Delete all this in the middle and put it next to each other. Use your ears, see what sounds interesting to you. That's already quite cool. Maybe we can open up the rest of the Tom Groove to see how exactly we'd like to place this somewhere where we have a bit of space in between. Maybe place these closer to each other. This is something that is up to your creativity and how much time you want to spend with the groove. I personally think this is very fun. So I spend quite a bit of time placing the sounds here. As a bonus tip, you can highlight both of these and then hit option shift. I think on Windows it's alt shift. I don't know, just try yourself out until this Mickey Mouse hand appears. You can then just start scrolling within the clip. And this can also give you some cool results. Like this one is cool. Yeah, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this one out and just take this one, command J and duplicate it over. So we kind of piece our way up to the baseline. All these little elements are my base. We can color it accordingly. And this is how it sounds like in total. Let's enable the pads that I have here. Let's match the key of these both pads. I think this is good. Now I have a pigments preset also loaded up here, which I will record arm. It's triggering some chords using this random chords generator. And if we play, epic vibes here. Nice. Fun. It's just really fun. Sounds really like Volencent here. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like and subscribe button. You can grab these sounds on lotustunes.com and I will see you in the next video. Peace.